You know, sadly, a couple days ago, there was a tree trimmer that was killed by one of these chippers. But Menlo Park, he, uh, he died of his injuries, and I don't know exactly what happened, but there's so many things that could lead to a chipper accident that I think are, are worth talking about. I'm trying to find out as much as I possibly can about this fatality for a couple of reasons. But the most important reason from my perspective is, is how can this sort of thing happen? Why did it happen? What led to this incident? Um, what I did find out was the guy was 47 years old, some guy named Jesus. Um, I do know of someone who knows him and I'm going to do what I can to figure this out. But I imagine that because of the liabilities and blame that's going to be placed upon the company, nobody's going to talk about it very much. You know, they don't want the fingers being pointed at uh, something that the company may have done wrong. <sighs> so sad, so sad. Just and And I was chipping all day yesterday, and, you know, I, I couldn't help but think about what this guy, what happened to him and the last moments of his life. And, and I was thinking about, you know, what could lead up to that because we do take this chipper far too casual. You know, there's a couple of safety things that are built into it. This is the reverse mechanism here. These are self-feeding rollers that pull you in or the brush in, not you, but if you hit this and push on it, then it reverses it and pulls everything back out. So that's kind of like a backup. They've also got these little things here, which, which pulls this thing back, which honestly, I think that's kind of a joke. It was probably to meet some kind of a regulation, some sort of a requirement. But, you know, I was thinking about it while I was chipping today. What could lead to somebody actually getting hurt so bad? And as I was handling the brush, my hand actually got caught up in one of these tight crotches as I was I was working. And if your hand goes through something like this while you're chipping, it could actually drag you into the chipper. And if you're off balance when that happens, if you feed it and you've got your, your hand lodged in a bad way, that's going to drag you into the chipper. So, you know, it's really important that you, you learn how, how to toss brush towards the chipper or bundle from behind and never ever put your hands into the chipper. A few years ago, there was a guy, he stood up on the chute and he was using his foot to push the brush in. And when he slipped, his hand pulled back on this, which dragged him right through. Uh, the guy that owned the company, that that guy was killed, obviously is no longer in business, but uh, it, it devastated him in, in a lot of ways, emotionally, uh, as well as financially, it put him out of business and he's never been the same since. So, I mean, there are so many other aspects of a fatality that, that you know, we don't really think about. I mean, so sad for the person and their family, but it also, uh, can destroy someone's business and what they work so hard to, to build. So working with a chipper, respect is the key word. Also, don't get cocky. You know, don't get in a hurry. Don't don't get to a point where you're just, you know, just wailing on feeding that monster because those things will eat you. And it just happened. That you're working on a road and a lot of times when you throw a great big branch that's going through there and it's got side branches come coming to you you might step out of the way into traffic you know i think traffic is probably one of our biggest hazards you know when you're blowing off the street you're working in front of you and you're going for it and a lot of times you're backing up into a bad situation so i can't 
you know, I can't stress enough how important it is to be constantly and continuously aware of your surroundings. It's not a very busy street. Not too long ago, I had a car fly down here at about 50 miles an hour. You gotta figure out ways of protecting the plants and the environment that you're working in. And you've got to kind of move it as you're going along. A ladder is a great tool. You can bridge it over fences. You can use different things to keep it to protect the plants. We're going to rope everything down, but you know, there's some delicate stuff under here. These roadies are really expensive plants and this woman wants to save them. Check this out. Tussock moth larva. These things are little moths and they're in the cocoon stage right now. But the cocoons, if you get it on your skin, it feels like asbestos. There's another interesting little spot here. You can see where this has been cut back multiple times where it was over the chimney, year after year after year. And because of that, it's turned into uh, quite, a, quite a mess. I just opted to take it off completely this time.